Hemoglobin, Wikipedia Audio Hemoglobin or hemoglobin, abbreviated HB or hemoglobin, is the iron-containing oxygen transport metalloprotein in the red blood cells of all vertebrates as well as the tissues of some invertebrates. Hemoglobin in the blood carries oxygen from the respiratory organs to the rest of the body. There it releases the oxygen to permit aerobic respiration to provide energy to power the functions of the organism in the process called metabolism. In mammals, the protein makes up about 96% of the red blood cell's dry content, and around 35% of the total content. Hemoglobin has an oxygen binding capacity of 1.34 mlO2 per gram which increases the total blood oxygen capacity 70-fold compared to dissolved oxygen in blood. The mammalian hemoglobin molecule can bind up to four oxygen molecules. Hemoglobin is involved in the transport of other gases, it carries some of the body's respiratory carbon dioxide as carbaminohemoglobin, in which CO2 is bound to the globin protein. The molecule also carries the important regulatory molecule nitric oxide bound to a globin protein thiol group, releasing it at the same time as oxygen. Research History Hemoglobin is also found outside red blood cells and their progenitor lines. Other cells that contain hemoglobin include the A9 dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, macrophages, alveolar cells, and mesangial cells in the kidney. In these tissues, hemoglobin has a non-oxygen carrying function as an antioxidant and a regulator of iron metabolism. Hemoglobin and hemoglobin-like molecules are also found in many invertebrates, fungi, and plants. In these organisms, hemoglobins may carry oxygen, or they may act to transport and regulate other small molecules and ions such as carbon dioxide, nitric oxide, hydrogen sulfide, and sulfide. A variant of the molecule, called leg hemoglobin, is used to scavenge oxygen away from anaerobic systems, such as the nitrogen-fixing nodules of leguminous plants before the oxygen can poison the system. Triplet oxygen, the lowest energy molecular oxygen species, has two unpaired electrons in antibonding pi asterisk molecular orbitals, iron tends to exist in a high spin 3d6 configuration with four unpaired electrons, iron has an odd number of electrons, and thus must have one or more unpaired electrons, in any energy state. In 1825 J. F. Engelhard discovered that the ratio of iron to protein is identical in the hemoglobins of several species. From the known atomic mass of iron he calculated the molecular mass of hemoglobin to n times 16,000, the first determination of a protein's molecular mass. This hasty conclusion drew a lot of ridicule at the time from scientists who could not believe that any molecule could be that big. Gilbert Smithson Adair confirmed Engelhardt's results in 1925 by measuring the osmotic pressure of hemoglobin solutions. The oxygen-carrying protein hemoglobin was discovered by Huenfeld in 1840. In 1851, German physiologist Otto Funk published a series of articles in which he described growing hemoglobin crystals by successively diluting red blood cells with a solvent such as pure water, alcohol, or ether, followed by slow evaporation of the solvent from the resulting protein solution. Hemoglobin's reversible oxygenation was described a few years later by Felix Hoppe Seeler. In 1959, Max Peretz determined the molecular structure of hemoglobin by X-ray crystallography. This work resulted in his sharing with John Kendrew the 1962 Nobel Prize in Chemistry for their studies of the structures of globular proteins.
The role of hemoglobin in the blood was elucidated by French physiologist Claude Bernard. The name hemoglobin is derived from the words heme and globin, reflecting the fact that each subunit of hemoglobin is a globular protein with an embedded heme group. Each heme group contains one iron atom, that can bind one oxygen molecule through ion-induced dipole forces. The most common type of hemoglobin in mammals contains four such subunits. Hemoglobin consists of protein subunits, and these proteins, in turn, are folded chains of a large number of different amino acids called polypeptides. The amino acid sequence of any polypeptide created by a cell is in turn determined by the stretches of DNA called genes. In all proteins, it is the amino acid sequence that determines the protein's chemical properties and function. X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy suggests iron has an oxidation state of approximately 3.2. Infrared vibrational frequencies of the OO bond suggests a bond length fitting with superoxide, X-ray absorption near edge structures at the iron K edge. The energy shift of 5 EV between deoxyhemoglobin and oxyhemoglobin, as for all the methemoglobin species, strongly suggests an actual local charge closer to Fe3 plus than Fe2 plus. There is more than one hemoglobin gene, in humans, hemoglobin A is coded for by the genes, HbA1, HbA2, and HbB. The amino acid sequences of the globin proteins in hemoglobins usually differ between species. These differences grow with evolutionary distance between species. For example, the most common hemoglobin sequences in humans and chimpanzees are nearly identical, differing by only one amino acid in both the alpha and the beta globin protein chains. These differences grow larger between less closely related species. Even within a species, different variants of hemoglobin always exist, although one sequence is usually a most common one in each species. Mutations in the genes for the hemoglobin protein in a species result in hemoglobin variants. Many of these mutant forms of hemoglobin cause no disease. Some of these mutant forms of hemoglobin, however, cause a group of hereditary diseases termed the hemoglobinopathies. The best known hemoglobinopathy is sickle cell disease which was the first human disease whose mechanism was understood at the molecular level. A separate set of diseases called thalassemias involves underproduction of normal and sometimes abnormal hemoglobins through problems and mutations in globin gene regulation. All these diseases produce anemia. Gower 1, Gower 2, Hemoglobin Portland I, Hemoglobin Portland 2 Genetics Variations in hemoglobin amino acid sequences, as with other proteins, may be adaptive. For example, hemoglobin has been found to adapt in different ways to high altitudes. Organisms living at high elevations experience lower partial pressures of oxygen compared to those at sea level. This presents a challenge to the organisms that inhabit such environments because hemoglobin, which normally binds oxygen at high partial pressures of oxygen, must be able to bind oxygen when it is present at a lower pressure. Different organisms have adapted to such a challenge. For example, Recent studies have suggested genetic variants in deer mice that help explain how deer mice that live in the mountains are able to survive in the thin air that accompanies high altitudes. A researcher from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln found mutations in four different genes that can account for differences between deer mice that live in lowland prairies versus the mountains. After examining wild mice captured from both highlands and lowlands, it was found that, 
the genes of the two breeds are virtually identical except for those that govern the oxygen-carrying capacity of their hemoglobin. The genetic difference enables highland mice to make more efficient use of their oxygen, since less is available at higher altitudes, such as those in the mountains. Mammoth hemoglobin featured mutations that allowed for oxygen delivery at lower temperatures, thus enabling mammoths to migrate to higher latitudes during the Pleistocene. This was also found in hummingbirds that inhabit the Andes. Hummingbirds already expend a lot of energy and thus have high oxygen demands and yet Andean hummingbirds have been found to thrive in high altitudes. Non-synonymous mutations in the hemoglobin gene of multiple species living at high elevations have caused the protein to have less of an affinity for inositol hexaphosphate, a molecule found in birds that has a similar role as 2,3 BPG in humans, this results in the ability to bind oxygen in lower partial pressures. Birds' unique circulatory lungs also promote efficient use of oxygen at low partial pressures of O2. These two adaptations reinforce each other and account for birds' remarkable high-altitude performance. Hemoglobin adaptation extends to humans, as well. Studies have found that a small number of native Tibetan women have a genotype which codes for hemoglobin to be more highly saturated with oxygen. Natural selection seems to be the main force working on this gene because the mortality rate of offspring is significantly lower for women with higher hemoglobin oxygen affinity when compared to the mortality rate of offspring from women with low hemoglobin oxygen affinity. While the exact genotype and mechanism by which this occurs is not yet clear, selection is acting on these women's ability to bind oxygen in low partial pressures, which overall allows them to better sustain crucial metabolic processes. Hemoglobin is synthesized in a complex series of steps. The heme part is synthesized in a series of steps in the mitochondria and the cytosol of immature red blood cells, while the globin protein parts are synthesized by ribosomes in the cytosol. Production of Hb continues in the cell throughout its early development from the proerythroblast to the reticulocyte in the bone marrow. At this point, the nucleus is lost in mammalian red blood cells but not in birds and many other species. Even after the loss of the nucleus in mammals, residual ribosomal RNA allows further synthesis of Hb until the reticulocyte loses its RNA soon after entering the vasculature. Hemoglobin has a quaternary structure characteristic of many multi-subunit globular proteins. Most of the amino acids in hemoglobin form alpha helices, and these helices are connected by short non-helical segments. Hydrogen bonds stabilize the helical sections inside this protein, causing attractions within the molecule, which then causes each polypeptide chain to fold into a specific shape. Hemoglobin's quaternary structure comes from its four subunits in roughly a tetrahedral arrangement. In most vertebrates, the hemoglobin molecule is an assembly of four globular protein subunits. Each subunit is composed of a protein chain tightly associated with a non-protein prosthetic heme group. Each protein chain arranges into a set of alpha helix structural segments connected together in a globin fold arrangement. Such a name is given because this arrangement is the same folding motif used in other heme-slash-globin proteins such as myoglobin. This folding pattern contains a pocket that strongly binds the heme group. A heme group consists of an iron ion held in a heterocyclic ring, known as a porphyrin. This porphyrin ring consists of four pyrrole molecules cyclically linked together with the iron ion bound in the center. The iron ion, which is the site of oxygen binding, coordinates with the four nitrogen atoms in the center of the ring, which all lie in one plane. 
The iron is bound strongly to the globular protein via the N atoms of the imidazole ring of F8 histidine residue below the porphyrin ring. A sixth position can reversibly bind oxygen by a coordinate covalent bond, completing the octahedral group of six ligands. Oxygen binds in an end-on bent geometry where one oxygen atom binds to Fe and the other protrudes at an angle. When oxygen is not bound, a very weakly bonded water molecule fills the site, forming a distorted octahedron. Synthesis Structure Even though carbon dioxide is carried by hemoglobin, it does not compete with oxygen for the iron binding positions but is bound to the protein chains of the structure. Hemoglobin F Oxygen saturation Oxyhemoglobin Deoxygenated hemoglobin Evolution of vertebrate hemoglobin Iron's oxidation state in oxyhemoglobin The iron ion may be either in the Fe2 plus or in the Fe3 plus state, but fairy hemoglobin cannot bind oxygen. In binding, Oxygen temporarily and reversibly oxidizes to while oxygen temporarily turns into the superoxide ion, thus iron must exist in the plus 2 oxidation state to bind oxygen. If superoxide ion associated to Fe3 plus is protonated, the hemoglobin iron will remain oxidized and incapable of binding oxygen. In such cases, the enzyme methemoglobin reductase will be able to eventually reactivate methemoglobin by reducing the iron center. Hemoglobin A The most common with a normal amount over 95%, hemoglobin A2 delta chain synthesis begins late in the third trimester and, in adults, it has a normal range of 1.53.5%. Hemoglobin F in adults Hemoglobin F is restricted to a limited population of red cells called F cells. However, the level of HBF can be elevated in persons with sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia. In adult humans, the most common hemoglobin type is a tetramer called hemoglobin A, consisting of two alpha and two beta subunits non-covalently bound each made of 141 and 146 amino acid residues, respectively. This is denoted as alpha 2 beta 2. The subunits are structurally similar and about the same size. Each subunit has a molecular weight of about 16,000 daltons, for a total molecular weight of the tetramer of about 64,000 daltons. Thus, 1g slash dl equals 0.1551 mol slash l. Hemoglobin A is the most intensively studied of the hemoglobin molecules. Hemoglobin D Punjab a variant form of hemoglobin, hemoglobin H a variant form of hemoglobin, formed by a tetramer of beta chains, which may be present in variants of alpha thalassemia. Hemoglobin BART's a variant form of hemoglobin, formed by a tetramer of gamma chains, which may be present in variants of alpha thalassemia. Hemoglobin S a variant form of hemoglobin found in people with sickle cell disease. There is a variation in the beta chain gene, causing a change in the properties of hemoglobin, which results in sickling of red blood cells. Hemoglobin C another variant due to a variation in the beta chain gene. This variant causes a mild chronic hemolytic anemia. Hemoglobin E another variant due to a variation in the beta chain gene. This variant causes a mild chronic hemolytic anemia. Hemoglobin as a heterozygous form causing sickle cell trait with one adult gene and one sickle cell disease gene. Hemoglobin SC disease a compound heterozygous form with one sickle gene and another encoding hemoglobin C, hemoglobin Hopkins II, a variant form of hemoglobin that is sometimes viewed in combination with hemoglobin S to produce sickle cell disease.
In human infants, the hemoglobin molecule is made up of two alpha chains and two gamma chains. The gamma chains are gradually replaced by beta chains as the infant grows. Men, 13.8 to 18.0 g slash dl, women, 12.1 to 15.1 g slash dl, children, 11 to 16 g slash dl, pregnant women, 11 to 14 g slash dl. Cooperativity the four polypeptide chains are bound to each other by salt bridges, hydrogen bonds, and the hydrophobic effect. In general, hemoglobin can be saturated with oxygen molecules, or desaturated with oxygen molecules. Oxyhemoglobin is formed during physiological respiration when oxygen binds to the heme component of the protein hemoglobin in red blood cells. This process occurs in the pulmonary capillaries adjacent to the alveoli of the lungs. The oxygen then travels through the bloodstream to be dropped off at cells where it is utilized as a terminal electron acceptor in the production of ADP by the process of oxidative phosphorylation. It does not, however, help to counteract a decrease in blood pH. Ventilation, or breathing, may reverse this condition by removal of carbon dioxide, thus causing a shift up in pH. Hemoglobin exists in two forms, a taut form and a relaxed form. Various factors such as low pH, high CO2 and high 2,3 BPG at the level of the tissues favor the taut form, which has low oxygen affinity and releases oxygen in the tissues. Conversely, a high pH, low CO2, or low 2,3 BPG favors the relaxed form, which can better bind oxygen. The partial pressure of the system also affects O2 affinity where, at high partial pressures of oxygen, the relaxed state is favored. Inversely, at low partial pressures, the tense state is favored. Additionally, the binding of oxygen to the iron heme pulls the iron into the plane of the porphyrin ring, causing a slight conformational shift. The shift encourages oxygen to bind to the three remaining heme units within hemoglobin. Deoxygenated hemoglobin is the form of hemoglobin without the bound oxygen. The absorption spectra of oxyhemoglobin and deoxyhemoglobin differ. The oxyhemoglobin has significantly lower absorption of the 660 nm wavelength than deoxyhemoglobin, while at 940 nm its absorption is slightly higher. This difference is used for the measurement of the amount of oxygen in a patient's blood by an instrument called a pulse oximeter. This difference also accounts for the presentation of cyanosis the blue to purplish color that tissues develop during hypoxia. Deoxygenated hemoglobin is paramagnetic, it is weakly attracted to magnetic fields. In contrast, oxygenated hemoglobin exhibits diamagnetism, a weak repulsion from a magnetic field. Scientists agree that the event that separated myoglobin from hemoglobin occurred after lampreys diverged from jawed vertebrates. This separation of myoglobin and hemoglobin allowed for the different functions of the two molecules to arise and develop. Myoglobin has more to do with oxygen storage while hemoglobin is tasked with oxygen transport. The alpha and beta-like globin genes encode the individual subunits of the protein. The predecessors of these genes arose through another duplication event also after the Nathosum common ancestor derived from jawless fish, approximately 450-500 million years ago. The development of alpha and beta genes created the potential for hemoglobin to be composed of multiple subunits a physical composition central to hemoglobin's ability to transport oxygen. 
Having multiple subunits contributes to hemoglobin's ability to bind oxygen cooperatively as well as be regulated allosterically. Subsequently, the alpha gene also underwent a duplication event to form the HBA1 and HBA2 genes. These further duplications and divergences have created a diverse range of alpha and beta-like globin genes that are regulated so that certain forms occur at different stages of development. Binding for ligands other than oxygen Most ice fish of the family Shanachthyidae have lost their hemoglobin genes as an adaptation to cold water. Assigning oxygenated hemoglobin's oxidation state is difficult because oxyhemoglobin, by experimental measurement, is diamagnetic, yet the lowest energy electron configurations in both oxygen and iron are paramagnetic. The lowest energy form of oxygen, and the lowest energy forms of the relevant oxidation states of iron, are these. HbA1c hemoglobin A2, hemoglobin C, hemoglobin F. Competitive All of these structures are paramagnetic, not diamagnetic. Thus, a non-intuitive distribution of electrons in the combination of iron and oxygen must exist, in order to explain the observed diamagnetism and no unpaired electrons. Alpha globin 1 beta globin, delta globin. The two logical possibilities to produce diamagnetic HBO2 are carbaminohemoglobin, carboxyhemoglobin, oxyhemoglobin. Allosteric Types in humans Degradation in vertebrate animals Another possible model in which low spin Fe4 plus binds to peroxide, O22, can be ruled out by itself, because the iron is paramagnetic. Here, the iron has been oxidized by two electrons, and the oxygen reduced by two electrons. Direct experimental data Thus the nearest formal oxidation state of iron in HBO2 is the plus 3 state, with oxygen in the 1 state. The diamagnetism in this configuration arises from the single unpaired electron on superoxide aligning antiferromagnetically with the single unpaired electron on iron, to give no net spin to the entire configuration, in accordance with diamagnetic oxyhemoglobin from experiment. The second choice of the logical possibilities above for diamagnetic oxyhemoglobin being found correct by experiment, is not surprising, singlet oxygen is an unrealistically high energy state. Model 3 leads to unfavorable separation of charge, although it could make a minor contribution as a resonance form. Iron's shift to a higher oxidation state in HBO2 decreases the atom's size and allows it into the plane of the porphyrin ring, pulling on the coordinated histidine residue and initiating the allosteric changes seen in the globulins. Early postulates by bioinorganic chemists claimed that possibility number one was correct and that iron should exist in oxidation state two. This conclusion seemed likely, since the iron oxidation state three is met hemoglobin when not accompanied by superoxide. O2 to hold the oxidation electron, was known to render hemoglobin incapable of binding normal triplet O2 as it occurs in the air. It was thus assumed that iron remained as Fe when oxygen gas was bound in the lungs. The iron chemistry in this previous classical model was elegant, but the required presence of the diamagnetic, high energy, singlet oxygen molecule was never explained. It was classically argued that the binding of an oxygen molecule placed high spin iron in an octahedral field of strong field ligands, this change in field would increase the crystal field splitting energy, causing iron's electrons to pair into the low spin configuration, which would be diamagnetic in Fe. 
This forced low spin pairing is indeed thought to happen in iron when oxygen binds, but is not enough to explain iron's change in size. Extraction of an additional electron from iron by oxygen is required to explain both iron's smaller size and observed increased oxidation state, and oxygen's weaker bond. The assignment of a whole number oxidation state is a formalism, as the covalent bonds are not required to have perfect bond orders involving whole electron transfer. Thus, all three models for paramagnetic HBO May 2nd contribute to some small degree to the actual electronic configuration of HBO2. However, the model of iron in HBO2 being Fe is more correct than the classical idea that it remains Fe. When oxygen binds to the iron complex, it causes the iron atom to move back toward the center of the plane of the porphyrin ring. At the same time, the imidazole side chain of the histidine residue interacting at the other pole of the iron is pulled toward the porphyrin ring. This interaction forces the plane of the ring sideways toward the outside of the tetramer, and also induces a strain in the protein helix containing the histidine as it moves nearer to the iron atom. This strain is transmitted to the remaining three monomers in the tetramer, where it induces a similar conformational change in the other heme sites such that binding of oxygen to these sites becomes easier. As oxygen binds to one monomer of hemoglobin, the tetramer's conformation shifts from the T state to the R state. This shift promotes the binding of oxygen to the remaining three monomers heme groups, thus saturating the hemoglobin molecule with oxygen. In the tetrameric form of normal adult hemoglobin, the binding of oxygen is, thus, a cooperative process. The binding affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen is increased by the oxygen saturation of the molecule, with the first molecules of oxygen bound influencing the shape of the binding sites for the next ones, in a way favorable for binding. This positive cooperative binding is achieved through steric conformational changes of the hemoglobin protein complex as discussed above, i.e., when one subunit protein in hemoglobin becomes oxygenated, a conformational or structural change in the whole complex is initiated, causing the other subunits to gain an increased affinity for oxygen. As a consequence, the oxygen binding curve of hemoglobin is sigmoidal, or S-shaped, as opposed to the normal hyperbolic curve associated with non-cooperative binding. The dynamic mechanism of the cooperativity in hemoglobin and its relation with the low-frequency resonance has been discussed. Besides the oxygen ligand, which binds to hemoglobin in a cooperative manner, hemoglobin ligands also include competitive inhibitors such as carbon monoxide and allosteric ligands such as carbon dioxide and nitric oxide. The carbon dioxide is bound to amino groups of the globin proteins to form carbaminohemoglobin, this mechanism is thought to account for about 10% of carbon dioxide transport in mammals. Nitric oxide can also be transported by hemoglobin, it is bound to specific thiol groups in the globin protein to form an S-nitrosothiol, which dissociates into free nitric oxide and thiol again as the hemoglobin releases oxygen from its heme site. This nitric oxide transport to peripheral tissues is hypothesized to assist oxygen transport in tissues, by releasing vasodilatory nitric oxide to tissues in which oxygen levels are low. The binding of oxygen is affected by molecules such as carbon monoxide. CO competes with oxygen at the heme binding site. Hemoglobin's binding affinity for CO is 250 times greater than its affinity for oxygen, meaning that small amounts of CO dramatically reduce hemoglobin's ability to transport oxygen. Since carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, and tasteless gas, 
and poses a potentially fatal threat, carbon monoxide detectors have become commercially available to warn of dangerous levels in residences. When hemoglobin combines with CO, it forms a very bright red compound called carboxyhemoglobin, which may cause the skin of CO poisoning victims to appear pink in death, instead of white or blue. When inspired air contains CO levels as low as 0.02%, headache and nausea occur, if the CO concentration is increased to 0.1%, unconsciousness will follow. In heavy smokers, up to 20% of the oxygen active sites can be blocked by CO. In similar fashion, Hemoglobin also has competitive binding affinity for cyanide, sulfur monoxide, and sulfide, including hydrogen sulfide. All of these bind to iron in heme without changing its oxidation state, but they nevertheless inhibit oxygen binding, causing grave toxicity. The iron atom in the heme group must initially be in the ferrous oxidation state to support oxygen and other gases binding and transport. Initial oxidation to the ferric state without oxygen converts hemoglobin into hemoglobin or methemoglobin, which cannot bind oxygen. Hemoglobin in normal red blood cells is protected by a reduction system to keep this from happening. Nitric oxide is capable of converting a small fraction of hemoglobin to methemoglobin in red blood cells. The latter reaction is a remnant activity of the more ancient nitric oxide dioxygenase function of globins. Carbon dioxide occupies a different binding site on the hemoglobin. Carbon dioxide is more readily dissolved in deoxygenated blood facilitating its removal from the body after the oxygen has been released to tissues undergoing metabolism. This increased affinity for carbon dioxide by the venous blood is known as the Haldane effect. Through the enzyme carbonic anhydrase, carbon dioxide reacts with water to give carbonic acid, which decomposes into bicarbonate and protons. Hence, Blood with high carbon dioxide levels is also lower in pH. Hemoglobin can bind protons and carbon dioxide, which causes a conformational change in the protein and facilitates the release of oxygen. Protons bind at various places on the protein, while carbon dioxide binds at the alpha amino group. Carbon dioxide binds to hemoglobin and forms carbaminohemoglobin. This decrease in hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen by the binding of carbon dioxide and acid is known as the Bohr effect. The Bohr effect favors the T state rather than the R state. Conversely, when the carbon dioxide levels in the blood decrease, carbon dioxide and protons are released from hemoglobin, increasing the oxygen affinity of the protein. A reduction in the total binding capacity of hemoglobin to oxygen due to reduced pH is called the root effect. This is seen in bony fish. It is necessary for hemoglobin to release the oxygen that it binds, if not, there is no point in binding it. The sigmoidal curve of hemoglobin makes it efficient in binding, and efficient in unloading. In people acclimated to high altitudes, the concentration of 2,3-bisphosphoglycerate in the blood is increased, which allows these individuals to deliver a larger amount of oxygen to tissues under conditions of lower oxygen tension. This phenomenon, where molecule Y affects the binding of molecule X to a transport molecule Z, is called a heterotropic allosteric effect. Hemoglobin in organisms at high altitudes has also adapted such that it has less of an affinity for 2,3 BPG and so the protein will be shifted more towards its R state. In its R state, hemoglobin will bind oxygen more readily, thus allowing organisms to perform the necessary metabolic processes when oxygen is present at low partial pressures.
Animals other than humans use different molecules to bind to hemoglobin and change its O2 affinity under unfavorable conditions. Fish use both ADP and GTP. These bind to a phosphate pocket on the fish hemoglobin molecule, which stabilizes the tense state and therefore decreases oxygen affinity. GTP reduces hemoglobin oxygen affinity much more than ADP, which is thought to be due to an extra hydrogen bond formed that further stabilizes the tense state. Under hypoxic conditions, the concentration of both ADP and GTP is reduced in fish red blood cells to increase oxygen affinity. A variant hemoglobin, called fetal hemoglobin, is found in the developing fetus, and binds oxygen with greater affinity than adult hemoglobin. This means that the oxygen binding curve for fetal hemoglobin is left shifted, in comparison to that of adult hemoglobin. As a result, fetal blood in the placenta is able to take oxygen from maternal blood. Hemoglobin also carries nitric oxide in the globin part of the molecule. This improves oxygen delivery in the periphery and contributes to the control of respiration. No binds reversibly to a specific cysteine residue in globin, the binding depends on the state of the hemoglobin. The resulting S-nitrosylated hemoglobin influences various NO-related activities such as the control of vascular resistance, blood pressure, and respiration. NO is not released in the cytoplasm of erythrocytes but transported by an anion exchanger called AE1 out of them. Hemoglobin variants are a part of the normal embryonic and fetal development. They may also be pathologic mutant forms of hemoglobin in a population, caused by variations in genetics. Some well-known hemoglobin variants, such as sickle cell anemia, are responsible for diseases and are considered hemoglobinopathies. Other variants cause no detectable pathology, and are thus considered non-pathological variants. In the embryo in the fetus, after birth, variant forms that cause disease. When red cells reach the end of their life due to aging or defects, they are removed from the circulation by the phagocytic activity of macrophages in the spleen or the liver or hemolyze within the circulation. Free hemoglobin is then cleared from the circulation via the hemoglobin transporter CD163 which is exclusively expressed on monocytes or macrophages. Within these cells the hemoglobin molecule is broken up, and the iron gets recycled. This process also produces one molecule of carbon monoxide for every molecule of heme degraded. Heme degradation is one of the few natural sources of carbon monoxide in the human body and is responsible for the normal blood levels of carbon monoxide even in people breathing pure air. The other major final product of heme degradation is bilirubin. Increased levels of this chemical are detected in the blood if red cells are being destroyed more rapidly than usual. Improperly degraded hemoglobin protein or hemoglobin that has been released from the blood cells too rapidly can clog small blood vessels especially the delicate blood filtering vessels of the kidneys, causing kidney damage. Iron is removed from heme and salvaged for later use, it is stored as hemocytorin or ferritin in tissues and transported in plasma by beta-globulins as transferrins. When the porphyrin ring is broken up, the fragments are normally secreted as a yellow pigment called bilirubin, which is secreted into the intestines as bile. Intestines metabolize bilirubin into urobilinogen. Urobilinogen leaves the body in feces, in a pigment called stercobilin. Globulin is metabolized into amino acids that are then released into circulation. Hemoglobin deficiency can be caused either by a decreased amount of hemoglobin molecules, as in anemia 
or by decreased ability of each molecule to bind oxygen at the same partial pressure of oxygen. Hemoglobinopathies may cause both. In any case, hemoglobin deficiency decreases blood oxygen carrying capacity. Hemoglobin deficiency is, in general, strictly distinguished from hypoxemia, defined as decreased partial pressure of oxygen in blood, although both are causes of hypoxia. Other common causes of low hemoglobin include loss of blood, nutritional deficiency, bone marrow problems, chemotherapy, kidney failure, or abnormal hemoglobin. The ability of each hemoglobin molecule to carry oxygen is normally modified by altered blood pH or CO2, causing an altered oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve. However, it can also be pathologically altered in, e.g., carbon monoxide poisoning. Decrease of hemoglobin, with or without an absolute decrease of red blood cells, leads to symptoms of anemia. Anemia has many different causes, although iron deficiency and its resultant iron deficiency anemia are the most common causes in the Western world. As absence of iron decreases heme synthesis, red blood cells in iron deficiency anemia are hypochromic and microcytic. Other anemias are rarer. In hemolysis, Associated jaundice is caused by the hemoglobin metabolite bilirubin, and the circulating hemoglobin can cause renal failure. Some mutations in the globin chain are associated with the hemoglobinopathies, such as sickle cell disease and thalassemia. Other mutations, as discussed at the beginning of the article, are benign and are referred to merely as hemoglobin variants. There is a group of genetic disorders, known as the porphyrias that are characterized by errors in metabolic pathways of heme synthesis. King George III of the United Kingdom was probably the most famous porphyria sufferer. To a small extent, hemoglobin A slowly combines with glucose at the terminal valine of each beta chain. The resulting molecule is often referred to as HbA1c. As the concentration of glucose in the blood increases, the percentage of HbA that turns into HbA1c increases. In diabetics whose glucose usually runs high, the percent HbA1c also runs high. Because of the slow rate of HbA combination with glucose, the HbA1c percentage is representative of glucose level in the blood averaged over a longer time. Glycosylated hemoglobin is the form of hemoglobin to which glucose is bound. The binding of glucose to amino acids in the hemoglobin takes place spontaneously in many proteins, and is not known to serve a useful purpose. However, the binding to hemoglobin does serve as a record for average blood glucose levels over the lifetime of red cells, which is approximately 120 days. The levels of glycosylated hemoglobin are therefore measured in order to monitor the long-term control of the chronic disease of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Poor control of T2DM results in high levels of glycosylated hemoglobin in the red blood cells. The normal reference range is approximately 45.9%. Though difficult to obtain, values less than 7% are recommended for people with T2DM. Levels greater than 9% are associated with poor control of the glycosylated hemoglobin, and levels greater than 12% are associated with very poor control. Diabetics who keep their glycosylated hemoglobin levels close to 7% have a much better chance of avoiding the complications that may accompany diabetes. In addition, increased glycosylation of hemoglobin increases its affinity for oxygen, therefore preventing its release at the tissue and inducing a level of hypoxia in extreme cases.
Elevated levels of hemoglobin are associated with increased numbers or sizes of red blood cells, called polycythemia. This elevation may be caused by congenital heart disease, COR pulmonal, pulmonary fibrosis, too much erythropoietin, or polycythemia vera. High hemoglobin levels may also be caused by exposure to high altitudes, smoking, dehydration, advanced lung disease and certain tumors. A recent study done in Pondicherry, India, shows its importance in coronary artery disease. Hemoglobin concentration measurement is among the most commonly performed blood tests, usually as part of a complete blood count. For example, it is typically tested before or after blood donation. Results are reported in G-L, G-DL or mol-L1 G-DL equals about 0.6206 mol-L, although the latter units are not used as often due to uncertainty regarding the polymeric state of the molecule. This conversion factor, using the single globin unit molecular weight of 16,000 d is more common for hemoglobin concentration in blood. For MCHC the conversion factor 0.155, which uses the tetramer weight of 64,500 d is more common. Normal levels are Role in disease Normal values of hemoglobin in the first and third trimesters of pregnant women must be at least 11 G-DL and at least 10.5 G-DL during the second trimester. Dehydration or hyperhydration can greatly influence measured hemoglobin levels. Albumin can indicate hydration status. If the concentration is below normal, this is called anemia. Anemias are classified by the size of red blood cells, the cells that contain hemoglobin in vertebrates. The anemia is called microcytic if red cells are small, macrocytic if they are large, and normocytic otherwise. Hematocrit, the proportion of blood volume occupied by red blood cells, is typically about three times the hemoglobin concentration measured in G-DL. For example, if the hemoglobin is measured at 17 G-DL, that compares with a hematocrit of 51%. Laboratory hemoglobin test methods require a blood sample and analysis on hematology analyzer and CO oximeter. Additionally, a new non-invasive hemoglobin test method called pulse CO oximetry is also available with comparable accuracy to invasive methods. Diagnostic uses Concentrations of oxy and deoxy hemoglobin can be measured continuously, regionally, and non-invasively using NIRS. NIRS can be used both on the head and on muscles. This technique is often used for research in e.g. elite sports training, ergonomics, rehabilitation, patient monitoring, neonatal research, functional brain monitoring, brain-computer interface, urology, neurology, and more. Long-term control of blood sugar concentration can be measured by the concentration of HbA1c. Measuring it directly would require many samples because blood sugar levels vary widely through the day. HbA1c is the product of the irreversible reaction of hemoglobin A with glucose. A higher glucose concentration results in more HbA1c. Because the reaction is slow, the HbA1c proportion represents glucose level in blood averaged over the half-life of red blood cells is typically 50-55 days. An HbA1c proportion of 6.0% or less show good long-term glucose control, while values above 7.0% are elevated. This test is especially useful for diabetics.
Athletic Tracking and Self-Tracking Uses The functional magnetic resonance imaging machine uses the signal from deoxyhemoglobin, which is sensitive to magnetic fields since it is paramagnetic. Combined measurement with NIRS shows good correlation with both the oxy and deoxyhemoglobin signal compared to the bold signal. Hemoglobin can be tracked non-invasively, to build an individual data set tracking the hemoconcentration and hemodilution effects of daily activities for better understanding of sports performance and training. Athletes are often concerned about endurance and intensity of exercise. The sensor uses light-emitting diodes that emit red and infrared light through the tissue to a light detector, which then sends a signal to a processor to calculate the absorption of light by the hemoglobin protein. This sensor is similar to a pulse oximeter, which consists of a small sensing device that clips to the finger. Analogs in Nonvertebrate Organisms Other Oxygen Binding Proteins a variety of oxygen transport and binding proteins exist in organisms throughout the animal and plant kingdoms. Organisms including bacteria, protozoans, and fungi all have hemoglobin-like proteins whose known and predicted roles include the reversible binding of gaseous ligands. Since many of these proteins contain globins and the heme moiety, they are often called hemoglobins, even if their overall tertiary structure is very different from that of vertebrate hemoglobin. In particular, the distinction of myoglobin and hemoglobin in lower animals is often impossible, because some of these organisms do not contain muscles. Or, they may have a recognizable separate circulatory system but not one that deals with oxygen transport. In all these groups, Heme-slash-globin-containing molecules that deal with gas binding are referred to as oxyhemoglobins. In addition to dealing with transport and sensing of oxygen, they may also deal with NO, CO2, sulfide compounds, and even O2 scavenging in environments that must be anaerobic. They may even deal with detoxification of chlorinated materials in a way analogous to heme-containing P450 enzymes and peroxidases. The structure of hemoglobins varies across species. Hemoglobin occurs in all kingdoms of organisms, but not in all organisms. Primitive species such as bacteria, protozoa, algae, and plants often have single globin hemoglobins. Many nematode worms, mollusks, and crustaceans contain very large multi-subunit molecules, much larger than those in vertebrates. In particular, chimeric hemoglobins found in fungi and giant annelids may contain both globin and other types of proteins. One of the most striking occurrences and uses of hemoglobin in organisms is in the giant tube worm which can reach 2.4 meters length and populates ocean volcanic vents. Instead of a digestive tract, these worms contain a population of bacteria constituting half the organism's weight. The bacteria react with H2S from the vent and O2 from the water to produce energy to make food from H2O and CO2. The worms end with a deep red fan-like structure which extends into the water and absorbs H2S and O2 for the bacteria, and CO2 for use as synthetic raw material similar to photosynthetic plants. The structures are bright red due to their containing several extraordinarily complex hemoglobins that have up to 144 globin chains, each including associated heme structures. These hemoglobins are remarkable for being able to carry oxygen in the presence of sulfide, and even to carry sulfide, without being completely poisoned or inhibited by it as hemoglobins in most other species are. Presence in non-erythroid cells In history, art, and music Some non-erythroid cells contain hemoglobin. In the brain, 
these include the A9 dopaminergic neurons in the substantia nigra, astrocytes in the cerebral cortex and hippocampus, and in all mature oligodendrocytes. It has been suggested that brain hemoglobin in these cells may enable the storage of oxygen to provide a homeostatic mechanism in anoxic conditions, which is especially important for A9 de neurons that have an elevated metabolism with a high requirement for energy production. It has been noted further that A9 dopaminergic neurons may be at particular risk since in addition to their high mitochondrial activity they are under intense oxidative stress caused by the production of hydrogen peroxide via autoxidation and slash or monoamine oxidase mediated deamination of dopamine and the subsequent reaction of accessible ferrous iron to generate highly toxic hydroxyl radicals. This may explain the risk of these cells for degeneration in Parkinson's disease. The hemoglobin-derived iron in these cells is not the cause of the post-mortem darkness of these cells, but rather is due to neuromelanin. Outside the brain, hemoglobin has non-oxygen-carrying functions as an antioxidant and a regulator of iron metabolism in macrophages, alveolar cells, and mesangial cells in the kidney. Historically, an association between the color of blood and rust occurs in the association of the planet Mars, with the Roman god of war, since the planet is an orange-red, which reminded the ancients of blood. Although the color of the planet is due to iron compounds in combination with oxygen in the Martian soil, it is a common misconception that the iron in hemoglobin and its oxides gives blood its red color. The color is actually due to the porphyrin moiety of hemoglobin to which the iron is bound, not the iron itself, although the ligation and redox state of the iron can influence the pi to pi asterisk or n to pi asterisk electronic transitions of the porphyrin and hence its optical characteristics. Artist Julian Vos Andrea created a sculpture called Heart of Steel in 2005 based on the protean's backbone. The sculpture was made from glass and weathering steel. The intentional rusting of the initially shiny work of art mirrors hemoglobin's fundamental chemical reaction of oxygen binding to iron. Montreal artist Nicolas Bayer created Luster, a sculpture in stainless steel that shows the structure of the hemoglobin molecule. It is displayed in the atrium of McGill University Health Center S Research Center in Montreal. The sculpture measures about 10 meters times 10 meters times 10 meters. Hemoglobin variants. Hemoglobin protein subunits. Hemoglobin compounds. <laughs>